Welcome to the next lesson in our module on basic Java features, where we provide some background on the computing system components needed to employ the Java programming language to develop Android apps. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to identify the main components of a computing system and differentiate hardware components from software components. You will also recognize some basics of how the hardware works, since that knowledge is necessary to understand how the software works which in turn is necessary to write efficient apps. Finally, you will understand the purpose of high-level programming languages and the role of the compiler and virtual machine in creating and executing Java programs. You can probably speed through this lesson if you have prior programming experience. To start things off, let's define what a computer is. A computer, regardless of whether it is a desktop computer or a mobile phone, is a device which can execute a program, or what we call an algorithm. And an algorithm is simply a precise, unambiguous, step-by-step -step process for completing a task. Note that all three of those attributes are extremely important. A computer, which is a marvel of engineering, is by itself a very stupid device. It can only do what humans tell it to do. And when we tell it to do something, we have to do it in a very precise, unambiguous, step-by-step -step manner. I like to make the analogy that programming is like creating a recipe for someone who has never baked before. We've all seen the TV sitcom where the little kids are in the kitchen attempting to cook something without any help from adults. And when the recipe says to add two eggs, the kids simply drop two whole eggs, shells and all, into the bowl. Programming a computer is similar, as the computer cannot know what you intend Rather, it only does exactly what you say. Now, a computer system is made up of hardware and software. The hardware is all the physical components that you can see and touch, whereas the software is all the programs that run on the hardware. Even though this class is about creating software, knowing some of the basics of the hardware helps us to understand how some things work and why we must do some things in a specific way. The main component of a computer system is the central processing unit, or CPU. This is the chip that forms the brains of the computer. It has two main components, which are the ALU, which does all the mathematical and logical computations, and the control unit that really directs what happens. There is also the memory where the programs and data are stored. There are different types of memory, including RAM, or random access memory, ROM, which is read-only memory, and high-speed cache. And then there are the input devices that allow users to put information into the computer and output devices that allow the computer to provide information back to the user. Now the main RAM memory of the computer stores the program that is running and any data that is used by that program. In current computing devices, this memory is usually measured in gigabytes, where a gigabyte is a billion bytes. So then the next question is, what is a byte after all? Well, inside the computer, all information is stored by electrical charges. The charges can be present or absent, or on or off. And each of these charges is called a bit. And for ease of discussion, we say it is either a 1 or a 0. Since a single bit by itself can only represent two values, 1 and 0, we group them into sets of 8 and call that a byte. The computer is able to access byte-sized chunks of information in memory by an address. Every byte has a unique address. Now all information that we store in the computer, regardless of what it represents, is encoded as ones and zeros. And since a byte, which is 8 bits, can only represent 256 different values, we usually have to group bytes together so that they can represent even larger sets of values. For example, to represent an integer in the computer, we usually group 4 bytes together which allows us to represent over 4 billion different values. Now that we've covered some of the basics of computer hardware, let's consider computer software since that is the focus of this class. Again, software is simply the set of instructions that we want the computer to execute. Everything that is running on the computer is considered software, all the way from the operating system that controls how the computer operates down to the games that you play on the computer. Now when we create these sets of instructions for the computer to execute, we cannot use English, as it is neither precise or unambiguous, which are two of the required properties of algorithms that we discussed earlier. 
so we need to create special languages. And thus programming languages are invented. A programming language allows us to specify our algorithm, or what we want the computer to do, in such a way that the computer can understand it and actually do it. For Android programming, we use the Java programming language. Now Java and other popular programming languages such as C++, Python, and Ruby are considered high-level languages since they are easy for humans to understand. But unfortunately, computers do not understand such languages since they only understand ones and zeros. Thus, we need a way to transform a program written in a high-level language down into the ones and zeros that the computer understands. To do that, we use a program that is known as a compiler. The compiler takes your high-level program, known as the source code, and converts it into object code, or the ones and zeros that the computer understands. This object code is platform specific, and thus the object code created for a Windows machine will not run on a Mac or an Android device. Now Java is a bit different in that its compiler does not produce object code that only runs on a particular computer. Instead, the Java compiler produces what is known as a bytecode, which is object code for a hypothetical computer, or what we call a virtual machine. This bytecode is a low-level code that can run on any computer that has a piece of software known as the Java Virtual Machine, or JVM. This allows the same bytecode to be executed on any computer regardless of what operating system it is running. This lesson gave you an overview of the components of a computing system and introduced you to the concepts of hardware and software. Now that you have completed this lesson, you should be able to identify the main components of a computer system, recognize the basics of how computer hardware and software works, and understand the purpose of using a high-level programming language to create apps, as well as understand the role of the Java compiler and the Java virtual machine in creating and executing Java programs.